Welcome to another edition of the Cornhole Insider Video Podcast. I'm Joel Karnick. This is ACL Pro, Blake Karnick. How are we doing, Blake? Thanks for having me once again, sir. I bet the podcast is sponsored by Ruthless Bags. I love the hostiles. There's a lot of different Ruthless Bags at ruthlessbags.com. Thanks to Wreck-It Boards, Kyle Ralph and the folks there providing our boards here today. Also, thank you to wheelwayautos.com and State Farm Insurance for sponsoring uh, Team Karnick and our ventures here in the podcast. You feel free to comment. Please subscribe. That helps us out a lot. Uh, a lot of great show ideas that have come our way. And one of them, Blake, that uh, people talked about is air mailing. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the mental approach to air mailing and a couple different scenarios. So when you're practicing air mailing, Blake, what would you say is a couple of things that are key to you being successful at this? For my airmails, I mainly think of two things when I'm practicing airmails. One is really extending out and getting through the bag, not so much trying to throw it harder or something, just really extending out, making sure I'm getting that reach and that follow through. And the second thing that I focus on is where I'm looking. I'm always looking at the back of the hole. Like when you're playing basketball, they always tell you to stare at the back of the rim when you're shooting the shot. That's the same thing I do in my airmails. So you mentioned the first part there, and I think it's key that people, I think, need to realize that your airmail shot has to be the same as your regular shot. It's just a little bit, maybe whatever it may be, a higher release. Blake said a little more extension. You can't be doing or stepping different. Your, your shot has to be the same. I think big reason on that, Blake, is that you don't airmail very much. You might go a half hour into a game without ever throwing an airmail, and then you're expected to throw a way that you haven't done in, a, in quite a while. Yeah, you're not going to throw it like every single round. Maybe like the high-level pros who make 60 to 70% of the shot will. But, I mean, you're not, you're, like you said, you're not shooting it that much maybe once every 10, 15 minutes. So it's important to not have to change much when you're doing it. All you're doing is maybe extending out a little more. You're not changing, like, your grip. Or you're not stepping instead of not stepping. It's important to keep things fluid and as similar as possible when you're shooting an airmail. And like any other part of cornhole, Blake, straight is number one. If it's not straight, <laughs> nothing else really matters, right? Yeah, you got to stay straight and you got to make sure you're not, I mean, short is kind of a poison when you're shooting an airmail too, unless if you're trying to like drag one of your bags in front, you would always want to rather miss long than short, in my opinion, when you're shooting an airmail. I know when I practice airmails, I'm focused at first, just number one, straight, 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 straight. And then you figure out the distance because, you know, depending on where you're playing, maybe some wind outside, maybe the backdrop is different, similar to basketball. Um, when you have different backdrops, the visual can be a little bit, some days you feel like you're throwing the bag, like you're throwing a shot put. And the next tournament you play in, you feel like the hole's like three feet away. So, but if it's straight, you know, you got a shot and the distance, you can usually figure that out pretty quick. Yeah, well, they say for basketball, too, if you don't get it there, it's not going to go in. So you got to really extend out, get it there, and like you said, staying straight is the most important aspect of an airmail shot. All right, so um, practice it by yourself. That's very important. Uh, fire 50, 60 airmails uh, if you're physically able to do that. It can be a little more jarring on the arm for us older guys. I think an important thing also is not just always shooting open board airmails if you're practicing. I mean, rarely in a game are you ever shooting an airmail without some type of at least one or two bags in the way. When you're practicing, put one or two bags in front and practice like it's an actual game-like situation. Because we talked about that visual of the hole, but sometimes you don't have a visual of the hole. It's covered up completely and you, you're going over Comes the down the muscle memory then. Yeah, right. So that practice part in our next video we do is going to be talking about practice routines. But when you're practicing that airmail, like Blake said, how many times you, you, you don't shoot an airmail when the hole's wide open unless you're trying to and one. Uh, that's something you can work on uh, later, but put some bags in front of the hole, make it a realistic game situation. Correct. All right, so we're going to dig in here and give you a couple different, uh, just kind of show you, Blake will show you the way he throws his airmail, and I might throw a couple too and try to. Try kind to of our airmail. mindsets when we're throwing them. Yeah, yeah. mindset of airmail. So we'll, we'll dig in here and kind of give you the way that, that we practice it. We'll do that right now. So again, two basics that we think are really important to be a good air mailer. And number one is it should be your same normal slide in shot. We're not 
changing it. We're not short arming it. We're not heaving it. We're doing our normal shot with maybe just a little later higher release and a little more follow through to get a little more height and distance, right? A little later, just extend out a little more, give it a little extra distance. You don't want to be really whipping through down here. It's going to cause you to be very inconsistent on your air mounts. And number two, visual. If there's part of that hole open, your eyes should be pasted on that so your brain knows where you're throwing. If the hole's totally covered up, which is pretty rare, you're relying on muscle memory, but you're still focusing on that general area of the hole. You have to have a visual. You're like a three-point shooter in basketball. Give your brain a visual of where you want that bag to go. Yes, sir. All right, let's let the kid here show <laughs> us how it's done. Here we go. See if I can drain one. Aiming backside here. We got two bags in front. Very realistic scenario here. Approach, approaching the shot, aiming right at the back of the hole, making sure I extend out. See if I can make it. Nailed it right on the backside. All right, backside hit, and that's really a great target spot to have is that backside. Well done. Thank you, sir. All right, one other part about the airmail I think that's important, Blake, is having at the very least rotation on your bag. You throw a very flat bag, and that's why you're a good airmailer. Um, but at the very least, if you can't get that really flat bag, having that rotation somewhat flat even if it's a little sideways is important i think because it's kind of like your slide shot the corners will hit sometimes and give you a little more of a, a leniency as far as going in the hole and i think just in general a flatter bag coming in is for me i think is going to go in more often yep having that flat bag with a tighter rotation is probably the most ideal when you're shooting an air mill shot i mean you saw my air mill that i made just a couple seconds ago when it hit that back side it kind of spun its way back in so if you have a type of knuckle rotation or if it's sideways, it may not have gotten in there. So you're 100% right. Having a tighter and flatter bag is very important to being consistently good at air mills. All right. The old man's going to give it a shot here. I'll see if I can do something as good as he did. Here we go. Let's see what right. you got. Pops. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. Same scenario. Two bags in front of the hole. Aiming backside. Backside. We're going to try to go right over the top and leave it for the other guy to hit. Money. Swish. Money. Now I didn't hit back, <clears throat> excuse me, back, I didn't hit back side of the hole, but it was good enough. If you're, again, Blake, if your mind is on that back side of the hole, I think it leaves a lot of room for error. Like that was a shorter air mail, but it was probably three inches shorter. But if it you was were just right looking there. at the middle of the hole, that would have probably came up a little shorter. It would have probably bounced off, maybe hit mine in. So Yeah. Look at Daddy Ogo. He's got the guns. Yes. <laughs> One more thing about the airmail for some of the upper level players or any level who wants to have fun with it is the airmail and one. Obviously, there's an airmail drag everybody knows about when one of your bags is hanging. But the and one, Blake, it brings you some joy, doesn't it's it? It's my favorite shot in Cornell, <laughs> the and one. Love it. The opponent's bag, as you can see, lingering on that back side of the hole. And what are you thinking when you're coming in here, Blake? Pretty much the same mentality. I'm aiming for that backside, trying to slap their bag off while at the same time my airmail going in. It's pretty much the same as normal airmail. You just got to be very precise with it. And you don't have to have a flat bag to do it, but it sure helps. It yeah. makes it a lot easier. So let's see if the kid can nail one here. Try my best. Same situation, two bags in front. Just trying to end one out of the back. Make sure I'm aiming to that backside of the hole and that I'm extending out. Let's see if I can nail it. Just a little left. Got two more shots with it. See if I can hit it. Come on. Ah, moved it's it. Too clean. Let's see if I can slap that backside. Get it there, Karnick. Ah, so it close. Moved it again, but you can tell there's not much room for error in that and one shot. Those are two really nice air mills, but you're really looking for that bag he's throwing to really buckle and hit that back side of the Yeah, hole. two out of three isn't bad, 66%. I'll take that. All right. Give it a shot at home. Have fun with the N1. Many unbearable hours later. Boom, Woo! baby. So there you go. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Try the and one. So the airmail, again, uh, make it as close to your normal delivery as possible. You got to be straight with that with that airmail, and uh, try to get it flat if you can. If if you struggle with the flat bag, at the very least, 
try to get a little rotation. Like we always say in cornhole, Blake, if it ain't straight, nothing else matters. It's the most important thing, keeping it straight. That's, that's what you got to do. Yep. Please hit subscribe and look for future videos here on the Northern Wisconsin Cornhole uh, Video Podcast. Blake Karnick, Joel here. Thank you for being a part of our podcast. Please hit subscribe. That's all we ask of you. Comment if you got any show ideas for us to do in the future and uh, shoot it straight. And I want to see if you hit one of those and one videos, post it, share it with us. We'd love to see it. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. See you guys later.